All right, so welcome to the channel. I have another anxiety success story. This guy is one of the coolest guys. I know I say that in every channel, but this guy is actually, I mean, I, me and him could have conversations all day long. He's one of the coolest individuals and I'm so impressed by his progress. I want to introduce everyone uh, to Marov. So Marov, welcome to the channel. Thank you for sharing your story. I know a lot of people are gonna be very inspired to hear your story, man. Yeah, thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. <laughs> So let's start in the very beginning. Yeah. How did your anxiety journey kind of start? How did your experience start? Where did you kind of fall into the loop? Okay. Yeah. So, you know, I had a panic attack on, um, it was almost a year ago now. Um, it was Friday, September the 13th, <laughs> Friday the 13th type of thing. It was a full moon too, uh, you know, kind of playing, putting it, putting some more into it. But uh, yeah, I mean, I was at the gym. I was at my last set, last rep. And I had friends coming over. Uh, I was super excited. I haven't had friends come over in a while, you know, because you know, as you get older, life, you know, life takes over. Um, so, you know, there could have been, you know, I was rushing a little bit, but um, yeah, I, I just I was doing side crunches and I felt a heart palpitation. Felt it felt like a gurgling in the in my chest, and it didn't feel normal, right? Because I've had heart palpitations before if I'm working out really hard, like it feels like your heart skips a beat, but you know, it's just kind of normal, right? So. Um, you know, so I jumped up and as soon as I jumped up, I had another four, one after the other, after the other, after the other. And then I got really lightheaded and I was like, oh shoot, like what's happening? It's like, I'm having a heart attack, you know, um, then my, I started getting really lightheaded and my thoughts started racing and, um, you know, but I said, okay, wait a second, your chest isn't hurting. You're not, you're not having a shortness of breath. Your left arm isn't numb. You're not having any pain, you know, like the typical, uh, symptoms that accompany heart attack, right? Um, so I thought, okay, now I'm having a panic attack. But it was weird though, man, because as I was walking down the hall, because I was going to go pick up my daughter, I was at the local YMCA, I was going to pick up my daughter from the daycare, I started to kind of tilt like this. And I'm like, oh, shoot, my balance, like, what is going on? You know, so um, as soon as I walked into the uh, daycare, my daughter didn't want to leave. Right. So she's all screaming and yelling, having fun with her friends. And typically that would never bother me. But I just felt myself, my heart started pounding. And I was just like, oh my God, why am I getting lightheaded? Like I just couldn't get away. You know, so I said, okay, you know, you can have another 15 minutes. And I went and sat down. And th uh, this was my priority, right? I called my friend. I was like, dude, I said, something's wrong with my heart. <laughs> I'm not going to be able to make it tonight. <laughs> he's like, he's like, what? <laughs> you know, should you go to the hospital? I said, like, yeah, I think so. But I just wanted to let you know because I didn't want you to, you know, <laughs> set aside your evening. And then I called my wife, right? And then my wife was at, with my son at uh, gymnastics. And she's all like, okay, tell me everything that's going on. And I said, I think I'm having a panic attack. But I said, this just feels too weird, you know? And my chest and my heart's just racing. So, you know, long story short, she came after about 20 minutes, um, you know, to pick me up. We went to the emergency room and, you know, they did all their usual stuff. You know, you go into an emergency room with a heart issue, they want to see you right away. So, um, you know, I think my heart rate was like over 170 or it was, uh, I think the pulse or something like that. And they said, whoa, you know, we need to get you in here. Like, you know, we need to you know, check you out right away. So they did blood pressure and all that stuff. And it was everything was really high. And, uh, you know, it, and so they had me stay in there for about six hours. They gave me two blood tests, um, chest x-rays, and, and all of that stuff, you know? And um, of course, everything was perfect. She said your heart and your blood work is extremely, you know, she goes, it's really healthy. And I'm like, oh, shoot, okay. Uh, they said, did you take a pre-workout? And I said, I did, but I didn't take anything with caffeine. It was more of just like a like mushroom or something like that. You know, they, they have some of that stuff, you know? So um, where it's kind of supposed to expand your you know, your, your blood flow and stuff like that, right? Your blood vessels. So I went home with a clean, you know, clean, uh, you know, bill there. And, um, you know, so that was Friday night, you know, Saturday, Sunday, the whole weekend, I just didn't feel right. You know, I just felt like, you know, so I went, I immediately went into this thing of, okay, every morning I'd wake up and I'd check, do I feel better? Like, shoot, I still feel the same. I have all this brain fog, um, you know, and then it didn't help that the following week at work, I had a couple of people out on vacation. So I was already stressed out about work coming up, you know, so I went into work and then I started to notice something. I was becoming hyper aware of my heart rate. I just, you know, be like, okay, my heart, my heart. 
I'm like, damn, I'm thinking about this way too much, right? So uh, yeah, so I mean, that's kind of how all of this really started, you know? And it was, uh, it was unlike anything that I've ever experienced before. Now I have had a bout of anxiety in my late teens. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'd like to call that an existential crisis, right? After high school, are you gonna go to college? Are you gonna start working? Oh my God, you don't have a girlfriend. Like, what are you, like, what are you gonna do with your life, right? And so I kind of, uh, that just kind of led into uh, like a year long, you know, I would call that like a generalized anxiety type of thing, right? And this is, we're going back to 1999, right? So there was no Google, there was no nothing. So and actually, I look at it now based, you know, just dealing with how I've experienced it so far is that was actually a blessing in disguise because this is something like you can easily over obsess about this. Right. And rightfully so. I mean, you feel like something is definitely not right, you know, but I was able to slowly get out of that after about a year, you know. And so I just kind of figured, you know, that's just what it is. You know, this is kind of weird. I, um, I flew to Fiji for a soccer trip. Um, and I was playing soccer over there. I got off the airplane, kind of looked around and I'm like, oh, I feel better. So, so that's what I was expecting this time. So I was expecting every time I get, wake up, I'm just gonna, everything's going to be back to normal, you know, and, and, and I'll be fine. So that's not the case, right? As, as we all know now, you know, but, um, uh, yeah, I mean, it just started a, a vicious cycle, you know, I just, you know, it went from the heart rate to obsessing about how I'm feeling. And then it just, every day, it would just start keep on doing it over and over and over. So I thought initially, okay, it's a chemical imbalance. So I started looking into supplements, spent a couple hundred dollars on supplements, right? And it's just like, this one is perfect for you. This one is perfect, like all these rave reviews. So I'm like, okay, cool, I'll check this out. Uh, I took the supplements. Um, and I think I told you about this too, but uh, I guess the one that I took had a hundred milligrams of, uh, they called it caffeia arabica. And I had stopped drinking ca caffeine at this point. It's already been like two to three weeks. So I had that and I'm sitting there and all of a sudden my head is spinning. I'm racing. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And then uh, I didn't know that you could call it a different ingredient, right? Instead of caffeine, they called it caffeia arabica because it's like, uh, you know, non-GMO, uh, you know, all this kind of stuff, right? So, uh, so that just kind of threw me for a loop, so, you know, um, and during that, and that same night, um, my son wanted to go watch The Joker, right? A psychological thriller. <laughs> so I'm just like, dude, but I didn't know. It was just like, all right, you know, all right, yeah, I'm going to go watch a movie with my son. Uh, went to the movie theater, watched that movie. I was like, oh, dang, I think I'm going to end up like this dude. Um, you know, like he's just running around killing people like his family and like, he's in a, you know, um, yeah, dude. I mean, it just, it just started like this, this huge cycle, man, you know? So, uh, yeah. It's pretty interesting. So you, when the first time, first time you had the panic attack, you actually kind of knew it was a panic attack. Yeah. It's actually kind of rare. Like, yeah. Me, yeah. I, I thought I was dying. I didn't yeah. know. And like yeah. most people like just, just didn't know. So. It's pretty, it's pretty amazing that you knew about that. So then you went to the, the doctor route and then, yeah, you know, they said everything was good. And then <clears throat> sounds like you kind of wanted to do everything more naturally. Right. So you were looking into supplements, you yeah. kind of had a caffeine situation. Um, yeah. What happened after that? And you know, like what else were you trying to do? Um, yeah. So like I made an appointment to go see my general practitioner, mm -hmm. um, you know, and God bless her soul, you know, like, um, but I mean, you know, she just told me to take, uh, okay, you don't want to take medication. I said, no, I said, because like, now mind you, I've always been interested in deeper stuff, right? So like, especially after my anxi anxiety, you know, episode when I was 18, 19, I had experienced some things. And so that kind of opened my mind to always look into different things, um, you know, so you know, I had actually read about this beforehand. And I think had I not had the experience when I was in my late teens, mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have known what was wrong with me. I would have thought, okay, the pre-workout I took is adversely reacting with my body and I'm dying, right? I mean, it's very easy to see that, right? But uh, I knew it was a panic attack just because of how I was feeling. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, I went to the doctor and she said, well, if you don't want to take medication, she said that she had struggled with anxiety in her college years and she took medication and she was fine. 
So she told me to take ashwagandha and valerian root. Okay. Oh, yeah, ashwagandha and yeah, valerian root. Yeah. Yeah. So she said, uh, you know, take those two and, and uh, you know, just take care of your stress. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, I'll do that. You know, so I started taking it and I'm just like, but then again, that also sets you up to fail because you're looking for immediate results because you feel so uncomfortable. Yeah. Right. And it just didn't happen, you know? So it was like, Oh shoot. Okay. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Right. Um, and mind you, during this time I was about to uh, have my baby, you know, in November. Uh, so uh, this was back in September and I were going into October and things. And um, it just, the cycle just started getting so much more like intense, dude. Like, I mean, I was, uh, went from sun up to sundown. Uh, I mean, not even until sundown until I go to sleep. I mean, you, you just have this feeling of malaise. You don't feel, you don't feel right. You know, you're scared about all these little things. Like I had a hard time, um, uh, waking up and getting out of bed to go to work. Mm. Um, and for me, I mean, that's unheard of, right? Like I was before I'd wake up at five 45, get up, get my stuff ready, make, make my meal planning for the day, go and work, you know, I'd kick butt at the office and come home, go to the gym, be with the family. I mean, that's kind of how I was living, you know? And so now this, I'm nervous to go to the store. Like I, I, that, that's when I start, really started looking into it a little bit more because I was like, when I'd walk out of the front door and I start walking down the hallway, the hallway looked weird to me. Like it's dark. Like, what the heck? Like, why am I thinking about it being dark? Of course it's dark, it's nighttime, right? But there's another part of me is just like, no, it's dark. You know, but like be afraid. And I'm like, oh dude, like what is happening? You know, this is this is not I didn't experience this in my late teens, right? So um, and then I go to the store and then I go into the store, my heart is just pounding. And um I'm like why is my heart pounding? Like, you know, this is my regular routine. Like Sunday night, I go get groceries for the week and, uh, you know, make sure that the family has food for the week and, and we're all good, right? Um, you know, so that started to be weird. And then when, when I'd go to the gym, as soon as I'd get in the parking lot, my heart would start pounding. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, I love the gym, right? Um, it wasn't until later until I really started to understand the dynamics of what anxiety is. And it makes sense as to why all of this stuff was happening, um, you know, but, you know, so the general practitioner wanted me to take medication, um, um, you know, but, you know, I've, I've had some family that have had some negative uh, effects with it, right? So I said, no, you know, it's just anxiety, you know, I, I can, I can work on this, you know, I can take care of this. So I decided to go and talk to a therapist because I wanted to be done with this before my son was born, because I knew that if I was in this state when my son was born, I would not be able to be there for my family. And that was something that was not an option. So I didn't realize it. I had good intentions, but I was putting pressure on the timeline. I was putting pressure on all this stuff. So I was fueling the anxiety so much because I was putting pressure timeline on everything. Um, you know, and, you know, so I went to the therapist and she started telling me about Okay, well, just do this. A uh, negative thought cannot exist if you're thinking about something good. So just think of something good. Picture a uh, picture a uh, a place that you really like. I'm like, okay, you know. So so I did that, and then I, I had to come up with a safe word. Dude, what was a safe word now? Uh, it was funny because I used to repeat it in my head in Spanish. Tranquilo. So I used to say tranquil, and then I used to say tranquilo, like, because it was so boring to me, right? So I used to look at it in different languages. But a thought crossed my mind. It's just like, dude, I'm not dumb. Like, what am I doing? Like, I'm, I'm, I'm like trying to trick myself. Like, so then I had that doubt enter, like, what the heck are you doing? Like, you know, but it was weird, though, because I did that for a few hours after, and something happened where I felt completely normal. And then I thought to myself, okay, well, this is working. You know, this is good. And as soon as I thought that, it just went right back to, to being anxious, right? And so, um, you know, it's, it's, I, I saw that therapist a few more times, um, you know, and, and 
I, I eventually went to a online site to uh, where they have therapists available. And, you know, unfortunately, the gentleman really didn't understand the severity of my anxiety. Um, you know, so he told me to put my hand on my chest and my hand on my stomach and to mimic you're hugging yourself, you're creating a safe space. So he said, every time you feel anxious, do that. And it's going to start rewiring your brain. And so I was walking at the beach. I was walking through the store. I stopped and was like, oh, you know, start holding myself. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, like you'd feel quick. You'd feel good for a quick second. Now, I think what these people were trying to, to teach me were things that will help for somebody that just, you know, they just had a really rough day and, and you know, anxiety is not an issue. But when you have it from from every waking moment to like me, or even I was dreaming about it. Um, that's something different, right? That's not, you're hugging yourself and, and thinking of good thoughts and, uh, you know, all lollipops and rainbows. It's not going to work out, you know? So, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, so I just went the therapist route, but I'm just like, okay, if a therapist can't help me, no one can help me. And this is before I knew about any, I never looked up anxiety on YouTube, right? I mean, I was always, a uh, what was my stuff, man? Joe Rogan podcast. I love 80s music, right? So I used to listen to all this music on, on, on YouTube. Um, you know, I'm really into like uh, UFOs and stuff like that. So, you know, I always used to watch documentaries on, on, on stuff like that, you know? And um, so now I found myself starting to watch YouTube videos. I'm like, oh my God, there's all this information on YouTube, um, you know? And... <laughs> I would play YouTube videos from the moment I woke up in the bathroom on my phone, get in the car. I had a car where I could Bluetooth. I'd listen to YouTube videos until I got to work, get into my office, watch YouTube videos in the background. I was obsessed, dude. Like I was completely obsessed with anxiety. I needed to know everything about anxiety. I came across a channel where, you know, I thought for sure this guy is going to be able to help me. Right. And so I started doing a lot of things. And the worst advice I got from that channel was to question everything. Now, that's not something you want to do if you're struggling with severe, sens you know, being uh, sensitized in a severe state, because a lot of the actions that you're doing is not rational, right? So if you're questioning why your hand's moving, or if you're questioning, that's what got me into DPDR, right? Uh, you know, because I looked at my hand, and I thought, whoa, who's controlling me to move my hand? You know, or like, whoa, who's having me walk like this? And I, man, that really screwed in my mind, man. It really did, you know? So yeah, just a lot of stuff, you know, and I'm sure a lot of people that are watching this can resonate, you know, uh, you know, with what I'm saying, you know, but um, yeah, I mean, it went from that. And then I got, kicked into intrusive thoughts mm -hmm. and then intrusive thoughts got into existential thinking, you know? And so all of that stuff combined made me feel like I, it was weird, man, because I came home and I looked at my wife and kids and I looked and I didn't have any feeling. And I thought to myself, like, what the hell is going on now? And this is before I knew anything about depersonalization, right? And I'm just like, why don't I feel love? Why don't I feel this urge to like, oh, I'm going to squeeze the crap out of my baby, right? And like I do every day when I come home from work, you know, and sit down and talk and do all this stuff. And that really concerned me, man. It felt like my soul was taken away, my spirit. And, and it was just like, I thought to myself, like, ooh, this is not good, right? So then I Googled it. Oh, my God. You know, and then I start reading 17, 18 years. And I'm like, oh, no, people have been struggling with this for 17, 18 years? Like, I thought, I thought I was done, man. I, th I thought that was it. You know, I'm just like, okay, at that time, I'm 38 years old. You mean I got to live like this until I'm in my 60s, 70s before even, like, I can't enjoy anything. I can't, I don't have the motivation to go do anything. Like, things I used to like, I don't have any interest in. Like, what's the point of all of this, right? You know, so um, thankfully, uh, you know, we went through the holidays, right? And I was just like that, you know, but um Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and I mean dude I used to love Thanksgiving like I used to plan that's like my favorite holiday right because I could just eat whatever I want with all of my family you know uh, now you can debate the whole 
thing about Thanksgiving, but you know, for me, I've always looked at it as a time for all the family to get together and and enjoy a nice meal and just enjoy each other's company. I loved it, dude. I loved it. And this time I'm like, I don't even want to go in the kitchen. Now, mind you, during this time, I had altered my diet drastically, cut out everything because I thought, you know, I lost about 30 pounds. You know, I lost 30 pounds in a matter of a month. You know, I guess you could call it extreme keto. I was just eating salad and, and, uh, and meat, nothing, you know, just nothing. And I'm just looking at myself and I'm like, Oh my God, like what is happening to me? Right. And so, um, you know, so it kind of, it kind of went into that and that's what I finally came across your channel. Right. And mind you, I had, uh, I had actually joined another program before, but the thing, you know, that, that, that person was telling you to take cold showers, um, and think happy thoughts and divert your focus. And I'm like, dude, Number one, I like warm showers. Uh, that's, that's, that's like the best part of the day, right? Uh, you know, but, uh, you know, I kind of, I guess now I can kind of understand what he was saying, but it wasn't for me. You know what I'm saying? Like for me personally, like that's when I came across you and then we spoke on the phone and uh, I was like, oh, dude, this guy, he gets it. He knows exactly what I'm talking about, you know, because I, I thought I was, you know, I, th I thought I was done for, man, you know, so, um, yeah. I thought, I thought the same thing. My line was, it's a game over. Like, that's yeah. what I genuinely thought. Because, yeah. and it's so amazing, right? Because it's, you went through this journey that's so personal. And, you know, yeah. you've been in this, you, you know, you've been with me for a little while. You see all yeah. these new people coming and it's yeah. the exact same story. Yeah. Going to the doctor, everything's fine. Okay, uh, maybe therapy. And then, like, sometimes people just, yeah. anxiety is a little bit different. And, yeah. and they're like, then what do I do? And then Google searching, then YouTube, uh -huh. this and that. Um, and so we started where I think it was like what January or like February or something like that. It was it was it was end of January is when we spoke, January twenty eighth. I'm really good with numbers, I don't know, but it's just, <laughs> That's it's pretty January twenty eighth. <laughs> yeah, yeah, January twenty eighth is when we spoke. And then uh, I believe my first call with the group was February second. Mm. And I remember uh, there was a few people on there, right? And there, you know, and uh, I just remember listening to yeah, yeah, and I just remember listening to everybody's story. And I was like, oh, you know, this, okay, cool. You know, like everybody, like they understand, you know, they, they know. Um, and I was kind of hoping that that would make me feel better, mm -hmm. but it didn't because actually the acceptance, you know, what you teach actually makes you feel worse in the beginning. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, yeah. I got yeah. some angry, I got some like, yeah, some people in the beginning of the program be like, Sean, what are you doing? And I was yeah. like, okay, hold up. Let me make a yeah. video on this. Yeah. Because I was expecting it and I assumed, but yeah, yeah. I, I, I learned yeah. the hard way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, you're building a tolerance exactly. to teach your body that, that it doesn't need to be on high alert anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but you know, just to, just to show like, I mean, I had just moved. I started a new job in February. I left a job that I, I really enjoyed. I was there for about 13 years, but this was a different opportunity, right? And it was something more in line with my creativity. That's another thing. I was, I was starting this new job and I was so scared. I'm like, my creativity is gone. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, what got me to this place and the, you know, is not going to, I'm not going to have it anymore. So, I mean, dude, now, now I look back at it. I was beating myself up tremendously. And it's just, just giving myself absolutely no credit. Right. And, uh, you know, I'd go to work and I've never done any psychedelics or anything like that, but I can only imagine that's what it feels like. I'm sitting there, everything just seems surreal and I'm typing and I'm like, but some, but an interesting thought came to me and it's just like, and that's where the DP got stronger, but then that's what's also helped it decrease was uh, you know, you know, people watching this, they might, they might hear this term. You are not your thoughts, right? I never understood that. I said, what the hell do you mean? You, I'm not my thoughts. Like if I, if I am not what's being produced in my mind, then who am I, right? Um, you know, and I've realized that, you know, like Eckhart Tolle and a, and a, a lot of spiritual people talk about this, right? It's like you're the observer of your thoughts, and I didn't understand that until I was still able to go to work. I was still able to know that something is wrong, right? 
So how do you know something is wrong? There's a deeper sense of yourself observing all of this. And, and that's, that initially will scare the crap out of you, right? Because you're just like, whoa, like, what is this? Um, I thought I was going crazy. But like a lot of people say, if you think you're going crazy, you are not. Because people that, that they, 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 you know, they, unfortunately, they, they kind of lose their senses and stuff like that. They don't know, right? They, they don't know. Everything's back to, you know, normal. So, um, but yeah, I just didn't understand the mechanics of that, you know? And, and, and that is a really eye-opening moment, you know? And that will help, uh, I, I believe, you know, with your transition out of anxiety, you know, right. that, and also you have to really be done with it. You know, uh, the Google searching, the researching, uh, you know, just everything. I mean, I mean, I'll be honest, even after I joined the program, I'm like, there has to be something else wrong. I mean, this just isn't working, you know? So, and rightfully so, because I mean, it is a traumatic moment to realize that you can no longer trust your mind yeah. because you have anxiety. You know, so, I mean, you know, that, that can really sh shake your world. I, I, it did for me at least. Right. Um, you know, so it's, 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 you know, just coming to those realizations, the support in the group has been outstanding. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you know, just being able to message people, being able to, you know, share on our calls and, and things like that. I mean, honestly, like if I didn't have that support group, I think, in things would be a lot worse for me, but it would be a lot different. It'd be a lot different. Um, you know, probably would have spent a lot of money just going from group to group to group, getting into this obsession of just like, okay, well, it's not working for me right now. I have to try something else. Okay. This is not working. I have to try something else. Number one, you have to stick to it. Number two, you have to stop with the obsessing. I know it's hard because there's a deep down part of you that wants to find out what's happening to you. Why do you feel this way? But you just kind of have to understand that it's just the anxiety. And even for me at this point, it's kind of weird talking about that as if it's a separate entity. Mm -hmm. But once you start getting out of it, you realize that it is, mm -hmm. you know, and then you also realize that this anxiety is, it's just there to keep you safe. And, and just understand that there's a love there. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that's taking care of you. Because if it just, if, if you didn't have it, You'd get run over by a car. You'd get into an accident, right? I mean, it's there to protect you. It's there to keep you safe, right? Uh, you know, but just kind of realizing that, you know. But I think the part that really threw me off for a loop was the DP. Yeah. It feels like the loss of self. Mm -hmm. You no longer have love. Your spirit is just completely like, you know. I was an extremely intuitive person before all of this, you know, it's just, uh, you know, that's, that's the term that, uh, you know, uh, the therapists use because, you know, I kind of went into some stories and said, oh, you're very intuitive. I'm like, yeah. And um, that was gone, you know? So basically anything that you enjoy about being a human, if you, if you experience DP, it'll be taken away, <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah. So, I mean, that in itself was, it was, a, it was a trip, man. I mean, you know, but, as you recover, as you start pulling out, it's not going to be this thing where you wake up and it's gone. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be this thing where you just, you'll start to notice, like for me personally, I started to notice I've taken an interest in some hobbies again. You know, if you could see behind me, I have a fish tank now. Uh, I got a couple of turtles and, you know, and things. I mean, those were things that I've always enjoyed doing, but I, but during this whole, you know, process, um, I didn't have the space, the mental space to even think about this, Right. Uh, you know, so I just found myself, you know, just end up doing things like I'd go to the store, then I'd get home and I'd be like, Oh shoot. I didn't even think about leaving. Right. Or I'd even look at people and be like, Oh, it's, this is too much. I got to go home. Uh, or my heart's not racing. Like for me, like the physical symptom was brain fog. I felt like a, uh, like a numb feeling in the middle of my chest. Right. Um, like I guess beneath your chest in that stomach area, right. Where you digest digestive tract is, I guess, or whatever, your stomach. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's just what it was. It just slowly, it just starts lifting. You know, you just have to give yourself time, you know. Um, there was an actually a really important thing that you guys had mentioned on the call where it was like, you have to give up control, mm -hmm. right? And for me, internally, I felt like there was me 
And then there was this, and I kept on fighting back and forth all the time. And then again, I just got tired of it. I said, I can't do this anymore, man. You know, so I just kind of, I finally got to the point where if I go crazy, then so be it. That was it. That was it. Then so be it. And it, you just felt like a mental shift where you still get the symptoms, but you're just like, whatever, you know, like, I mean, honestly, like I've been doing this for like, now granted, like it hasn't, I mean, it's almost been a year since the panic attack. Right. But um, I know people deal with this for years. Right. And so, you know, the other thing too, was I used to watch recovery videos. I used to get jealous. I used to be like, man, I hate them. Look at that. You know, like there, you get all of these emotions, man. Like you get jealous, you get, you know, you start thinking about all these things that just really, it's not, it's not rational. It's not rational, you know? It, yeah. I, I always said, um, and you know this, like I, I said yeah. my recovery started when I really hit rock bottom. Yeah. Because it was yeah. like, I had, I was a very creative, like I would say I'm still a pretty creative person, but I was like, no, yeah, there's yeah. another way. There's another way. And I kind of relied yeah. on my intellect really well. Yeah. And this was one thing every time I thought I, I had it, I was like, yeah. I'm wrong. And yeah. I had, there was one point where I couldn't come up with any idea about what to do. Yeah. And I was like, oh my God, like I, I can't even do anything. It doesn't yeah. matter. And so I just yeah. let go. And yeah. then ironically, you know, I reread, you know, Claire, we, you know, we talk a lot about her yeah. And, yeah. and I was like, and then that's when I started making progress and I was utterly shocked and yeah. it was weird. It, I, you know, I always kind of like, you know, I've had clients say this to me before and I, and I, I've said it to myself, but it really does yeah. feel like it's like a, like a rebirth, right? It feels like a second, like second chance in life. Um, yeah. Recovery is not what you expect, right? Like yeah, how was no. recovery for you? Because honestly, this you are actually one of the, like, you did actually recover pretty quick. Like, I know it sounds like for everybody, it always feels like it's really long, but like you actually did like in terms of, yeah. you did pretty well, but how was, how was that journey? Like how different was it from than what you were expecting? Um, <laughs> it, a lot of ups. I mean, no ups and a lot of downs, right? You, you'll hit a down, like you'll hit a peak kind of like the bye-bye panic, you know, emblem you have in the back there right but like you think you hit rock bottom and then there's more to go you go down more you know and it's just like oh dude and then you got to pull yourself up you know and then the the peak that you get to next time is not as high then you get pulled down again and then you go really high and you're just like all right you know i could see, yeah no this is good you know and then you know and so um it's a really bumpy road yeah. You know, just kind of imagine you're in the South somewhere in the Southern parts of the U S and you're going through a bumpy road, you know, but you see that apple orchard down the street and you're going to get there eventually. Right? Uh, but you know, it's just kind of, um, it's a really up and down affair. It really is. Um, you know, I 100% thought I was not going to get myself back. Mm -hmm. I said, there's absolutely no way that I will be able to get over this. There's absolutely no way that these thoughts that have been racking my mind, these, uh, these uh, you know, the intrusive thoughts, intrusive thoughts and existential thinking were very big for me. You know, I just, they just consumed my life, man, you know. But, um, you know, it is very interesting though, man, because before all of this, like I said, I was very into the mind, body, soul kind of connection type of thing, right? And so I was... <laughs> And, you know, by nature, I'm very stubborn, right? And I'm a, I am learn by doing. Mm -hmm. I need to experience something, you know? So uh, I wanted to experience, uh, you know, something deeper, right? And, um, you know, I guess in a way I did because I've learned that when your fight or flight center takes over, you can't rationalize it with words, and from my experience, when I would be in high anxiety, I would get flashes of images followed by an immediate emotion. So I'm just like, okay, wait a second. I think the way to communicate with that part of my mind is by doing and the emotions. So if I was giving it flashes of like something scary and then I'd get scared, it would latch onto that, right? Because you can't talk. You can't, you can't talk to that part of your mind, right? And so uh, that's, that's what I found was very important. And us as humans, 
we find that we communicate verbally, right? And that's like our biggest thing verbally and in writing. But this thing, at least for me, in my experience, I had to do it with emotions. I couldn't show that same fearful emotion because then it, my mind would latch onto that, that fear part of my mind would latch onto that. And it would be like, okay, he's still scared, right? There's, he's still scared. I mean, because if you think about it, that's the most primitive part of our brain, right? And so it would latch onto emotions and that's it, right? So, so um, yeah, I've learned a lot about how we, how we do things. And I wish I had this kind of, so, you know, somebody to kind of relay this information to me in the beginning, which is kind of what I want to do now. Like I honestly, like I've always wanted to help people. Like before this, I wanted to start a podcast, you know, catering towards, you know, men and being able to open up emotionally. How, how ironic is that? Right. Open up emotionally, you know, and kind of just, you know, um, you know, how there's this, um, you know, stigma, right. It's just like, Oh, you know, you're not as strong if you speak about your emotions as a man, you know, and stuff like that. But it's funny because now, you know, I look at that completely differently, right? And it's like, yeah, okay, I get it. I, I get it, you know, but, uh, you know, just the emotional part of it, you know, but being able to teach this, like I've even expressed it to you, like this stuff should be taught in high school. Honestly, it should be taught. It should be part of a curriculum, you know, where, because you have a lot of kids that are not going to go to college, right? I don't know what the exact number is, but there's a really low percentage, I guess, depending on demographics and things like that, where, what, you know, where the city is that you're going to school and stuff. But, you know, it all like depends, right? So, you know, you're kind of groomed to believe that if you don't go to college, you're going to kind of not be successful in life. But they don't really tell you about, hey, there's a union you can join. There is this you can join. So you have a lot of, you know, young people that um, they get into this and uh, they get existential, right? They get the anxiety and all that stuff. And it's more of just like, hey, use this as, a t as an opportunity to figure out what you really need. Everything that you're going through is completely normal. There's nothing wrong with you. There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. Everything that, you know, as crazy as it sounds, your heart palpitations, your DPDR, your, you know, your uh, high levels of anxiety shows you that you are completely healthy. <laughs> your body's doing everything that it's supposed to do because, you know, you're, it feels like you're not safe, you know? That's, that's exactly. And that was kind of, you know, that's kind of a long-term goal of, of what we're doing right here. Cause it's yeah. like, as we're guiding people out, the goal is because your story, exactly like mine, like how deep of a rabbit hole did you have to go through? How much unnecessary suffering did you have to go through to find something like this? Yeah. And a lot of people still, even when they find this stuff, like they're just like, you know, for whatever reason that, you know, just can't hop on either. It's not a right fit or whatever. And yeah, I mean, it's like how the idea would be to catch this earlier and also teach these yeah. things teach yeah. these things i mean i had someone would have just told me what would have happened in the beginning yeah. and yeah. explained it rather than be like oh no you're fine leave yeah. and like you know go to yeah. therapy and it was like childhood stuff and i'm like what no and yeah. and, then, and then that's it and then yeah. now i'm going on forums and um there was a, new one. <laughs> you know there was this one person who I remember in the forum, she was like messaging a lot. Don't know what this person, it was like a username or something. I don't know what it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, like Remy something. I don't even remember. And yeah. um, she was on the forums for years. Yeah. And then all of a sudden she disappears. Yeah. And I see a message from her, like it was like six months prior. She's like, hey guys, I fully recovered. Um, good luck with everything. And I was like, I tried to stalk that lead. I was like, what did you see? What was yeah. it, you know? And like, yeah. Yeah. it was just, yeah. like, and then I kind of realized, I was like, shoot, man. Like, I thought if I would have recovered, I would have just shared it with the world. But like this, and like, I kind of got it too when I recovered too. It was kind of like, I kind of wanted to focus on living for a little bit. Now I'm yeah. obviously doing this. Yeah. But these forums were just so, you know, it was just so toxic. It was really yeah, it's, it's really toxic, man. And, and, you know, what you teach and what the program teaches, a lot of people they don't want to hear it because mm -hmm. it's too simple. Yeah. It is simple, but it's not. And that's the, and, and that's the thing there where, you know, where a lot of people, you know, um, 
I was, uh, I've always been a very spiritual person, right? So I would try to look into spirituality. You know, there's things called dark night of the soul and all of this stuff that I kind of hear about. But what I've learned is that's all fine and dandy, right? But when your rational part of your mind is not working, you can't discern, you know, from what is what. So then you start, I would just suggest to everybody, you know, and this is just going off my own experience and all the people that we that 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 uh, that I'm part of with the, with the programs and stuff like that. Work on your anxiety first. Get out of that extreme sensitized state. And to me, I feel like there's only one way to do that. And you know, and, and Sean teaches it, teaches it. Uh, you know, a couple of good books that I that I read was Dr. Claire Weeks. There was another one, uh, I, I believe, it's an English gentleman, uh, Paul David. Paul David. Yeah, I made yeah. you his book. His DPDR was big with him. Yeah, yeah, at last the life, you know, and that really kind of, you know, showed me like, you know, because I had to look up to you guys because it was just like, okay, they went through this and they're healed and they're recovered. I can get there too, right? Um, but it's like your your mind will just start keep on coming up with all this stuff. I mean, you know, there was points there where I would just get flashes and images of just my childhood of just something, and I'm like, dude, I think I'm I think I'm losing it, you know, like um you know but it's 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 really interesting you know everybody that's listening and i'll say this with 100 percent confidence none of your symptoms are unique don't care don't care what you feel how how you think about it whatever i've now seen like spoken to enough people where i thought what i was experiencing was exactly unique to me there's something wrong with me and i posted in the group Oh yeah, I had this. I had that. Oh, I know exactly. I'm like, you get kind of mad. You're just like, damn. There's nothing, <laughs> you know. There's nothing that's unique about me with this thing, you know. And uh, so, because, yeah. yeah, it's so crazy because like in our in our and like in the group that Marv is talking about the mentorship, it's really interesting because like you'll post about a specific symptom. You'll hear about people saying they had the same symptom, but that it's gone now, which is yeah. like it's like beyond just normalizing it. It's like a next step. It's like, hey, it's awareness, but like people have gone through it as well like yeah. people have, and now marif is that individual where people are like messaging and marif is the one be like yeah yeah i went through that just keep you like that part lifts and so it's amazing how you've kind of now you're now kind of becoming the authority like like an authoritative like figure on it right you're becoming like yeah. that um which is amazing in itself just by you going through your journey uh, yeah that's pretty incredible man yeah i mean you know it's just like because i feel like it's our duty you know, uh, you, you go through something this traumatic, you know, and I'll use that word traumatic, you know, because it is, I mean, you know, you go through something like this and when you see it, you become more empathetic towards people. You, 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 you see things and you're just like, you know, there's a few individuals right now where I see their posts and I'm like, I have to chime in because it's like, you know, I know what they're going through, mm -hmm. but also you know, I know you're not really supposed to reassure and like look for assurance and stuff like that. But in the beginning, when you start practicing acceptance and all that, you, your anxiety does get increased. So it can be, you know, it's very natural and normal to say, man, something is wrong with me. This is not right. But to kind of, hey, you're okay. Like, this is just part of it. You know, then that kind of helps you, you know, accept more and just kind of, you know, go, go through it and get through it, you know, but yeah. yeah. Totally. And, and uh, for those that are listening in, Marif is kind of like, Marif is now like kind of in the program a little bit too, kind of helping out a lot of the individuals and I'm super yeah. excited for him to help out. Cause I always knew, I, I told you Marif in the very beginning, I think, yeah. at least I definitely thought it, which was like, yo, this guy could really like, he could really give back. Like, and he could do it in a way that like people would follow him too. Yeah. um which is pretty amazing yeah. yeah yeah no i mean it's it's definitely something that i enjoy doing you know there's there's like uh helping people become the best versions of themselves you know it's like for you know i just wanted to say a few things about some of the things that you know um tripped me up you know you hear about you are not your thoughts i know i kind of went over that already um in in how that separation happens um and then you also hear about after you recover, you become a better person, right? And a lot of individuals, they wanna go back to who they were before, which is fine. 
and that essence of who you were before does not go anywhere. But what I believe it means when you get out of it and you recover is you start to notice situations or times where you would push yourself through certain things. And you're just like, hey, wait a second. I shouldn't have to live like that. You know what I'm saying? Like you start to see like these certain situations, stuff that was giving you anxiety. You start to recognize that. You say, I know exactly what that is. I'm not going to put myself in that situation anymore, right? That's how your life gets better. You start taking care of yourself more uh, and, and you start to kind of pull yourself away from things that you're not really comfortable with. Um, you know, it, it was, there was that one. And also, again, like I spoke about spirituality, I have to talk about it because that's yeah. who I am. <laughs> you know, it's like, um, you know, I, I this experience uh, has changed my outlook on a lot of things. Um, it's actually because before I would look outside, mm -hmm. I would look outside for answers. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize that there's this, uh, there's this uh, inner intuition. There's this inner, like, yourself the observer that's watching your thoughts and stuff like that right knows everything i mean because honestly sean before all of this stuff started happening i knew that there is a disconnect in my mind with my with, with my feelings like i was like i feel like there's a part of my brain is not firing together right and i could think about that before i started thinking about having these intrusive thoughts of like wait a second if all i am is just brain signals in my brain who am i right? You start having existential thinking like that, right? And so, um, you know, you start to look, you actually fall in love with who you are as a person more, mm. if that makes any sense. Uh, you know, because then, like, once you recover, you trust yourself in a completely different way, because you have been through a traumatic experience. You literally have to trust that your body wants to get back to homeostasis, your mind wants to get back to homeostasis. And that Part of you that's once that keeps on thinking, 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 you have to give up control. Give up control and be like, okay, go ahead and do your thing. If you're going to experience this, go ahead and experience it. I have full trust and faith that you're going to get back to where we need to be to, to, to live a happy, you know. I mean, you know, I mean, life is not all happy all the time, but it, like at a place where you can look at things rationally, you can kind of engage in things that you want to engage in and not be controlled by fear. But yeah, man, it's uh, I, I do say this a lot. And you know, this but the, the best times in my life actually happens after anxiety. Yeah, literally, like it's my like I'm in my 30s, yeah. way more fun than it was even before anxiety. And like, yeah. and I was in college and I mean, it's um, but you're right. It's like it's a better version of who you, I feel like it, there's just more clarity. And there's yes. more groundedness. And I always say it's like, yo, if you can get out of this life becomes a playground a little bit more. there is nothing that really um i mean because it's like all internal right and it's just like and then you start to realize like you're your you can be your best friend or your worst enemy mm -hmm. it's all in you you know but uh yeah i mean yeah i mean it's been it's been one heck of an experience um you, you know and but it also has taught me how to I feel like I've learned life, you know, um, what I'm trying to say here, you know, th things kind of handle life, you know, when certain issues come up, like, I'll know how to handle it, right? And it's, and it's just like, I can just let everything just flow, you know, just, you know, things can come and go and you just, just enjoy and you, and, and you, you can deal with, you know, stressful situations a lot more easy, a lot easier, right? So. It's, it's I weird. I feel like my I can handle stress better than almost yeah. than a before, but yeah. way more than the average individual. Like when most people will give up and be like, "Yo, that's too much." Like it's yeah. not really a big deal because you understand it's the same principles, yeah. and it's just like you, you use it to your advantage. And other people will break, you know, like Claire Weeks, yeah. but you, you know, yeah. same as you, but you'll just bend, but you'll come back. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, stress management for me. Yeah. It's, it's like yeah and it's just like you know there's a there's this guy that i watched uh you know his name is Sadhguru, right he goes why would anybody want to manage stress and he talked about stress management <laughs> you know I'm like oh you know but uh yeah it's it's like you know some of the other things that i noticed was 
I was at my son's basketball game. You know, super excited. They were in the championship, right? It was like, they literally won by like one point and it was like a last second shot, right? And I was so excited. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then dude, that's like this wave of anxiety hit me. And I'm like, and then I later realized that the same, you know, it's a, it mimic it, excitement and anxiety mimic the same thing. Physiologically, how, the same. Yeah. how wild is that, dude? Right. It's just like, right. You know, you get out of anxiety and you want to feel excited again, but you're mimicking the same. I mean, it's, it's so, it's so weird, yeah. but you know, but it, it's just like, you know, the excitement, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, me and my wife, we would get into arguments and, and it was just like, I couldn't really, you know, it's just like, like why it literally felt like I went from, okay, I'm seven, I'm 11. I'm acting like a teen. I'm acting like I'm out of, you know, it just, I felt this was part of my recovery, man. Like I kind of went through all the decades of my, uh, of, of my you know, maturity, um, you know, and it's just like, I catch myself and I'm like, what the heck? Like, what, why are you talking like that? You know, like, you know, but it's like, it literally just feels like, you know, everything's reworking itself, you know, you're, you know, and um, you do, I mean, you do get back to yourself. I mean, I don't know what else to say. I mean, it's just the thoughts that I used to have with the emotions. I mean, it felt ugly. It felt ugly. I mean, you know, it, it really tripped me out because when I'd go to the doctor, I would see, um, you know, it, it, they did give you like a little questionnaire if you're depressed, right? And you know, I'd fill that out, and I'm and I'm looking at him like, oh my god, like all my numbers are high, yeah. you know. And before, I mean, I go there, and, you know, it would all be zeros, and now, you know, so it's more of just like, you know, you do go through a little bit of of a depression there that's caused by the anxiety, you know, because. Um, it, you know, and you go through that, you know, you go through everything. And, and and I know that a lot of people watching this, I know a lot of people that are watching this, they're not, uh, they're not, they're experiencing anxiety. Otherwise, to be honest with you, why would anybody really want to watch this stuff, right? They'd be like, <laughs> what are you guys talking about? They, they, they don't feel like themselves. They don't feel this or that, you know, but it's just like, so just understand this point is just like, I know that the emotions and the thoughts that you're having seem so real. They, they, it just seems like it's over. I, I totally understand that. I totally get that, but it's not, it, you know, it's, it's, you know, there's, uh, there's some scientific terms that I've learned about it, but it's like, uh, I think it's called state specific memory. <laughs> and that's why we talk to a lot of people that have recovered from anxiety. They can remember some of the things, but emotionally they can't, you know, recall how they were feeling emotionally so again just trust your body it has your back it has your back you know <laughs> you'll be good you'll be good you know i'm uh you know you can even ask my wife like she'll tell you like i'm so much more involved with my kids um you know uh and i had posted something in the group man where um i had given my son a, a bath for the first time and he's already nine months old you know and I didn't even realize it until after, you know, and I sat down, I was like, dude, that was the first time I gave him a bath, you know, and that showed me how self-absorbed, how uh, narcissistic I had become, just really involved in myself, how I'm feeling everything, right? And it's, and it's like, you know, it's like, um, you know, we're all at different stages of our lives. You know, I am at a point where I have a career and I have a family and, and, you know, I couldn't afford to let the anxiety take me over, but it did, you know, but I had to keep pushing through, you know, but it's like you, you can start enjoying some of these things. If it's not your children, your nieces, your nephews, just, just, just people in general, you know, and it's like, um, that's all I wanted, man. I just wanted to be a part of, of, of life again, you know? Yeah. I mean, you, you are, I mean, it's just yeah, keeping yeah. better for you and it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. I remember you talked about Daryl and how much of an inspiration yes. now, and now it's amazing, right? Because now you're that person for whoever's watching this. And yeah. I mean, like, like Daryl would say, like, you know, why I really, you know, connected with his, um, mm -hmm. with his video was, you know, he said he started working out again. Right. And, and like more than he did before. And like, he's spending more time with his children. Unfortunately, all the gyms are closed right now. Uh, you know, but you know, I started working out again, you know, and I started, 
um, you know, going for walks, bike rides, um, you know, just, just even though if I felt like, oh, I feel the anxiety coming on. And then you're just kind of like, this is anxiety. Nothing that it can throw at me now will shock me. Oh, lightheaded. I know exactly what this is. It'll come and go, you know, oh, this thought, this feeling, it comes and goes, you know? So, uh, yeah, but Daryl was like, you know, I remember him saying like the anxiety as you start recovering, it just gets pushed more and more towards the back. And it's not like he said, like, it's still there, but it's not something that he's basing his life around. It's more of just like, oh, it catches his attention every once in a while. And, and that's it. And I think I truly honestly believe that you will get to a point of where there's days go by where you don't even think about like what you felt like when you had anxiety, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. There'll be a point where it goes so far back where you'll look back and it'll yeah. be gone. And you don't know when it left. Yeah. That's the thing, right? Yeah. It really is. Cause like sometimes, you know, we, I mean, I talked about it in the group yesterday when the call, sometimes when people talk to me about morning anxiety now, it's been so long that yeah. I can't relate anymore. Like I yeah. really can't, I like remember and I remember hating it, but I honestly have a tough time feeling how like remembering the feeling now because it's just been so long yeah and I, and I and i remember you saying that you felt like you the anxiety that you experienced was like probably one of the worst that, that you i ever still do from. i really do yeah. even kaylee was mentioning she was like yo when i heard your story i was she was like yo i didn't even think it was that bad and i was like yeah. no it was i literally thought it was over and like yeah. you know how much of that is biased based on the fact that i felt it but honestly, when we even see people in the program, even those that struggle longer, I'm still kind of like, yeah, but mine was like, in yeah. terms of intensity, it feels like that. It was, it was yeah. a lot more. All of it ended up disappearing and it's been so long. Yeah. You, could you imagine if, it, if the memory still stayed and I was doing oh, this? Oh my yeah. God. Could you imagine how much it would like, suck to hear other people's stories? Yeah. And yeah. so you're like, you know, how do you feel when you come out? And I'm like, dude, you just, you help the people. And then I you know, start reading after and play Call of Duty. Like, it's, <laughs> I don't think about it afterwards. Yeah, man. Really? I, yeah. No, I, you know, and, that, and that's another thing that I thought about is just like, you've experienced it so severely and you sit here and you talk about it all day. And then you also created a program and, and post and videos and it doesn't even bother him, you know? So I'm just like, okay, so that also gave me hope too, you know? And it's like, you know, um, yeah, sorry. I'm just, I just thought about one more thing. It's like, because I know that there's people struggling with this. Intrusive thoughts. Yeah. Um, you know, that, that can be, that can be, I'm getting a little emotional just talking about it, man. But it's like, it will mess with your moral compass. Everything that you hold near and dear to your heart, it throws it in a different angle, man. It throws it in a different thing. And the thought is so like totally outside of anything that you would ever think of it catches your attention and you of course you're going to have an emotional reaction to it right you're just like what the hell was that you know and then boom you know what this guy doesn't have any more stress in his life but we still feel a little bit anxious we're going to latch on to that we're going to latch on to that and remind him to stay get that adrenaline pumping keep it pumping you know and like um, it wasn't until much later that I realized that I, no matter how like absurd the thought is, do not attach an emotion to it. You have to let it go. There's nothing wrong with you. You know, that's, that's one, that's one, that's one thing that I have to stress is like, you will think that there's something very wrong with you. Some of these thoughts that you get, there's nothing wrong with you. And it's actually, your mind is functioning exactly the way it should. And because it's still kind of confused, like we still feel anxious, your body still feels anxious, but there's nothing around you that that's causing you any threat. Mm -hmm. So then that's when you get, yeah. you know, into cogn cognitive things, right? And it's just like, okay, so we're going to throw this at you. We're going to keep you at this level. We're going to keep you here. We're going to keep you here just to make sure everything is safe. Mm -hmm. You know, again, that part of your mind doesn't know what's right or wrong. Mm -hmm. So it just throws out whatever, <laughs> you know, and you're just like, oh, oh no, what a, what a sick game to play. But I can also see how people can think like, okay, if my mind is creating this for me, how can I ever trust my mind again? You know, you, you, you see what I'm saying? And it's just like, you just have to realize that, that this is all being created to keep you safe. And there's parts of you 
through acceptance, through allowing what's happening um, and just kind of don't attach any emotions to it, the, the signal eventually dies. And then it's not important anymore. You know what I'm saying? And it's just like, so that's just, you know, I just really want to, you know, let everybody know about that. You know, please, if you're having intrusive thoughts, I mean, you know, it's, um, you know, of course, everything that we're talking about is anxiety related, right? Um, you know, so it's like, you know, if you have anxiety and it's kind of grown into all of these other things, um, you can throw it under the anxiety umbrella. I mean, it, you know, um, as long as it's been ruled out by the doctors, of course, right? Like, I was lucky. I went to the doctor and, you know, they did chest x-rays and blood works and everything was fine. And I kind of had an idea already what it was, what was going on, you know, but the intrusive thoughts was something I was definitely not ready for. I did not know what that was. The DP, I had no idea, um, you, you know, um, you know, just kind of observing yourself, like moving, you're just like, what, like, you know, even what I just did right now with my hands, yeah. uh, you know, I would look at that. Now I just like, you know, I could dance, like I dance now at nighttime with the kids right, and stuff. And it's all, it doesn't matter. But uh, yeah, man, you know, the the intrusive thoughts I always found were the most sinister because you can yeah. label DPDR with anxiety. You can label yeah. like the physical symptoms, but thoughts are so used to it coming from you. Like you think you're kind yeah. of like, and to disconnect from that for a bit during yeah. recovery. Yeah. It's uh, that's the tricky. Yeah. That's the tricky part. But Mark, yeah. man, you've been doing an awesome job and Thanks, um, I've been super, um, I, I honestly feel very honestly honored and just blessed to be a part of your journey with you. Thanks, and um, I know there's going to be a lot of people that are listening to this that are going to resonate with exactly what you're saying and, and at least give them some peace and comfort that, yeah. love, you know, and so I really appreciate that, man. Is there yeah, um, anything last, any last thing you want to share, man? Uh, no, I mean, you know, especially, you know, we have the pandemic going on, you know, and, and I was able to, to really advance my recovery during the pandemic, you know, and it just goes to show that, that you can do it. Um, you know, I honestly thought that, um, my life was over. I didn't see the point in living anymore. I, I, you, you know, and it was, I went from a person that, I looked at life like, damn, I only have 80, 90 years here, right? I got to get all this stuff done. There's so much I want to do. I want to go to Switzerland and like jump off the uh, the Alps and like, you know, and glide down the hill and the, the mountain and everything, you know? And and now I'm just like, I can't even seem to, like you wake up and you're just like, oh, how am I going to get through this day, you know? And just, 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 just know it's just part of the process, you know? Um, I know Sean has a lot of material that, that that's free in the groups and things like that, you know, where he kind of outlines how he recovered, you know, and, uh, you know, so it's like, you will get there. Um, just look at it as a bump in the road, you know, and um, yeah, you'll be, you'll, you'll, you'll get there. You'll get there. You'll get, you'll get back to who you really are and not questioning all these little things anymore. So yeah, 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 for sure, man. Well, I appreciate you hopping on the channel Yeah, for, sure. um, for those listening. Um, there's a private uh, Facebook community, uh, where we're giving out a bunch of exclusive content. I'll put the link down below. There's also a book where I kind of outline the steps. And if you're interested in specifically working for, with me um, and me guiding you through recovery, you can fill out an application and uh, my team and I can see if you're a good fit. And if so, um, we can have a strategy call with you, see if it's a good fit. And um, yeah, Marv, appreciate it again, man. All right. Yeah. Thanks, man. Cool, man.